The other thing that you think about with creativity is you need distinctive assets. And you need distinctive assets even in your ads. There are certain things in your ads that shouldn't change. Just because you get bored, it doesn't mean the consumer gets bored at the same rate as you. The consumer doesn't get bored faster than you. Because it's your job, you're thinking about it a lot. You then think that the consumer is also bored. No, the consumer doesn't get bored. What we mean by distinctive assets, if you go to the next slide, you will see that there are certain shows. I always like to use James Bond as the, the kind of film that has been there from the 1960s to now, but it has amazing distinctive assets. There's that white male, that's a distinctive asset. There's the gun, there's the martini, there's the car, there's the gorgeous lady. All of those ones are distinctive assets. You know you're gonna get them, you've got gadgets. You know you're gonna get the scientist who's clever. That stuff, and then you're gonna have a billion. You know those things exist in James Bond and they don't change. But now the last James Bond I watched, for example, they unstereotype the woman. Instead of just being a bikini woman, now she's kicking ass. Now she's a detective, she's super smart, she's clever. She's also saving James Bond. She's, you see now, they're starting to change the narrative to unstereotype the woman so that it's not just a woman in a bikini. It's just now a clever, sophisticated, highly educated woman who can fight, who can kick ass, so all of that. Same thing, when you watch Barbie, I've got three daughters, watch Barbie, Barbie is consistent and then you end up buying Barbie blanket, Barbie duvet, Barbie house, Barbie this, and they are very consistent treatment of Barbie. And that's what we call distinctive assets. Your advertising, your product must have things that don't change. Then you work around that because our brains use those shortcuts to figure out what is going on in your content. If you have a piece of content that constantly changes, that's really exhausting because it means I'm gonna to have to do the work all the time. When you watch a soapy, for example, it's probably only 20 minutes. There are certain things in a soapy that don't change in generations. You know them, and even if you miss it for a whole week and you come back again, you still feel like you're at home because there are certain things that don't change. And that's what we mean by distinctive assets. Next. So Mzama, just a question. Why, why then in terms of brand building, why do we keep chopping and changing stuff? Uh, primarily, I think this is mostly driven by when there's a new human resource in the helm or at the helm, uh, usually then we lose sight of actually there's a bigger picture here, which is the brand. It's got nothing to do with uh, what I'm doing. In fact, I like the way Elizabeth from Unilever explained it. Uh, so the way she explained it was that her role in understanding her role is that when she walks into Unilever, it's like the, the, the core of the image that's being painted is already there. All she has to do without changing everything is just throw in a few strokes, uh, her few, you know, paintbrush strokes to the image. Yes, you will see her contribution, but it's not about her contribution per se. It's about this bigger picture thing. Yeah, I think I've noticed in instances where I made mistakes, one, it was my ego. Uh, secondly, it was my boredom. Thirdly, it was my need to want to do something different. It was my boredom that was needing to do something different. And also, sometimes it's politics. Like, let's say you don't like the person who was there before you. And now you want to basically cleans them out of anyone's memory, which is stupid, that's just ego. And that's just underdeveloped spirit in us that you, you wanna wipe every good that other person has done so that no one can say, oh, you build on top of so-and-so. No, we actually should learn to build on top of others, not trying to destroy what others have done because we don't wanna be associated with their work. That's just ego. It's mostly for me, there's been toxic ego it has been boredom and it's been emotional immaturity on the part of the market here to not realize that there are certain things you should keep and then there are certain things you can change. And even the change, you change slowly. You don't just change. I mean, that's why in soapies they kill characters. They even have a funeral. And then you have people calling on radio, TV to say, how can we attend the funeral? 
because they have to kill the character slowly, bury the character or not bury it, make the character disappear. And then the character comes back again and people are so happy. Soapy is one of the few places where characters die and come back again. And we don't even question it. But because they've done it, they do it so well, the transitioning of characters out of the story. And that's what we also need to be doing as well, is that we must transition characters slowly out of the story and not, for example, I remember one mistake we made at Vodacom. When Vodacom moved from blue to red, we were quick to end the Yebo Gogo man, the, the black guy and the white guy, the old professor and the white guy. We were quick to end the meerkat. We were quick to end the certain symbols that defined the brand. And we used them just to introduce the red and then we kill them. We didn't even have a funeral for them. We didn't even celebrate them. We didn't allow the citizens to move with them slowly. And so that's the, something that you learn over time that perhaps we should have kept certain characters and mnemonics when we moved from blue to red and then kept them longer to make sure that the consumer walks with us because you can't just change from blue to red. That's already a huge change in color. And red is harsh, blue is warm. And now you've moved people from harsh, warm color to a harsh color. And then you take away the things that they love, the yellow gogo man, the white guy was funny, the meerkat that's funny, all of those things. So that was a big lesson for me as well that you have to move slowly. Don't, don't rush change because you wanna please the global team that to show that you did a radical change. No, you don't do that. You evolve slowly with people so that they can move slowly with you and then still love you and trust you. Next slide. <laughs>